to all of you all. And thank you so much for being here for this very special and interesting evening that we get into a symposium on colorectal oncology. Healthcare is undergoing tremendous evolution and tremendous development. We have clinical skills, we have subspecialities, we have super specialities, and we have clinicians today who are acquiring more and more skills and coupled with the kind of technology which is available today, they are able to treat several conditions, they are able to treat and diagnose very many conditions which we never knew of in the past, and there is a lot of activity which is happening both in the preventive space as well as in the curative and then subsequent rehabilitation of patients. We also live in an age of information technology. There is an overflow of information and hence the community's awareness about disease is extremely high. So it's a good situation to be in where there's an aware patient, there's an aware community which comes to the healthcare team to seek treatment and thanks to all the development in healthcare, we are able to treat patients. So the story still some time back was every healthcare individual was rather perturbed with the diseases of the heart. If it was cardiac, cardiac and cardiology, which was the major source of concern for all healthcare providers, I think I wouldn't be wrong in saying cardiac has moved over. And today we are in a situation where the disease burden in the community is more and more of oncology. So the need of healthcare today is to look at various aspects on how do we tackle oncology, what should be our approach to rid community or treat community of its oncology burden. The best way to decide on all of this is when there is a coming together of minds, senior minds, clinical minds, and uh, uh, the people from healthcare, people from industry, and people who make drugs, all of them when they come together, the providers, both in the public and the private healthcare space, when they come together, put their minds together, and then come up with a strategy, that is the best way for us to tackle a situation which is today hurting the community. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming here, and uh, thank you for sharing these uh, and participating in this. Uh, in this thought process of making cancer care not only accessible but also affordable to the vast millions that are there in our country. I would specifically thank all the eminent panelists who have spared their time today and who have come here in order to help us do that. Uh, without much ado, I would like to first uh, inv invite our first panelist on stage, Padmashri Professor Dr. Rajendra Badwe. Ladies and gentlemen, we rarely get this opportunity to listen to the words of a great and knowledgeable speaker. Uh, Dr. Badwe is the director of Tata Memorial Center and also is a member and advisor to many government initiative programs concerning cancer control and treatment. He is an internationally acclaimed, outstanding oncosurgeon and research scientist having an experience of around four decades. He has been conferred for his scientific and academic career with various awards including Padma Shri Lal Badur Shastri Award in 2013. And most of all, I am testimony to the fact he's a very passionate teacher and helps to, uh, to spread the knowledge of cancer to one and all uh, who come in touch with him. I welcome Dr. Badwe and request Dr. Narayani, Zonal Director, Fortis Hospital, Mulund and Kalyan to welcome him with a bouquet. Dr. Narayani, please.
Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for coming. I would request uh, Dr. Supriya, our medical superintendent from Forte Thunon, to please welcome uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Avinash Supriya. Today we are honored to have amongst us a very well-known actor and the author of the book Kiss of Life, Mr. Imran Hashmi. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Imran, for sparing your valuable time. And I, would, I must mention here that he agreed to this within a very short notice. We as lay people think of celebrities as always people who keep people waiting, delaying programs, but it is really very, very appreciable of you to have it will come absolutely on time and on a short notice just because he believes in the cause. I would request Mrs. Rinku Mavani, Marketing Head, Fortis Mulun, to welcome Mr. Ashmi with a bouquet of flowers. I'd like to invite Mr. Manoj Nair, Assistant Editor, Hindustan Times, one of the leading newspapers in India. Uh, he is covering corporate news stories. His experience in journalism has been over a period of more than 10 years and has been associated with the Hindustan Times since the last uh, more than two decades. He's work he was previously working in Times of India also and he's very well known for his engaging side of journalism. I'd like to request Mr. Singh Kumavani, our marketing head, to please welcome Mr. Manoj Last but not the least, I would like to invite Mr. Baudeep Singh, who is the CEO of Otis Healthcare, the largest healthcare group. Mr. Baudeep Singh has been a pillar of support for this entire meeting and has been very encouraging in this entire endeavor. He is a CEO who believes that his most important job is to be a facilitator who provides all support to the clinicians and nurses to deliver excellent patient care. He is an acknowledged business leader and a seasoned person in healthcare with over 25 years of experience. I would request Dr. Narayani, Zonal Director, Fortis Hospital, to welcome him with a bouquet. As I said, the entire purpose of this panel was to establish ideas which will help us deal with this menace of cancer. As I start the panel discussion, I would first like to ask Doc, Dr. Badwe sir about why is, the can why is cancer now becoming most, one of the most talked about diseases in the country today? I guess there are <clears throat> two or three reasons. Let me tell you what is not the reason. What is not the reason is that there is no increase in the incidence of cancer in India and which is the biggest achievement of this country. There are four other countries that come in line, the, the famous BRIC countries, where the economy is on the rise, whether it's Brazil, Russia or China, and India is one of those four countries. And Cancer incidence in all these three countries, other than India, it's risen by anywhere from 12 to 24 percent, whereas that in India has been a straight line. The incidence has remained constant. Then why is the perception that it is more? And the perception is more because of two reasons. One is urbanization does increase the incidence of cancer, the numbers, 
the absolute numbers increase. And urbanization is happening everywhere, so the absolute numbers will increase, but so is our population. So the denominator increases, the numerator also increases, and the, the net incidence remains uh, a constant. The second important thing, whether we, uh, we should be happy about the second reason, that the amount of money at the ground level has increased remarkably. That has allowed individuals to seek treatment on various uh, uh, things uh, for, for cancer. And the third reason is that the absolute percentage of curable cancers have increased by almost 50 to 60 percent, whereas the incidence of incurable cancers is going down remarkably in the last decade or so. So there are a lot more people who are walking on the streets of India cured of cancer. There is no more taboo that I have cancer or I don't have cancer, which makes it that there are a lot more people to talk about.